in this video, I'm going to show you how you can access Jupyter Notebooks with Python inside your ChatGPT. I have made a quick video how you can get access to code in Jupyter, which allows you to analyze data using Python directly in ChatGPT. But as you might know, there is a waiting list to get access to code in Jupyter. So I'm going to show you how you can go around with it and how you can use other plugin that is publicly available at this current time for anyone. I'm gonna link the video down below if you want to know how you can get access to code in Jupyter. All right, let's get started. There are two different ways that you can analyze data. Um, and I'm going to show you both of them here. The first option is that you can go and find any data publicly available to anyone to download. You can then uh, use this link here and use it in ChatGPT to analyze it and create the visuals for you. The second option that I'm going to show you later in this video is basically you having the data set. So it can be your own, it can be downloaded from somewhere and you want to basically just perform analysis on your own data set. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is that you wanna click on GPT-4 and here we are going to be using plugins. We then click on plugins and you can see that right now we have zero out of three enabled in this current chat. You can see that I have some plugins already here installed, but here we are going to go and click on plugin store. And unfortunately they still don't have any search bar here. So you will have to go to all and find a plugin that is called Notable. It looks like this. It has a small notebook icon in it. You want to click on install and you are going to be immediately redirected to a page where you should sign up and create an account. It's completely for free. So you can go and continue with Google, GitHub or LinkedIn or use any other email address. I'm gonna go with my Google account and just like that, it's installed and visible in my ChatGPT. So right now we can actually start using this plugin. In this first example, we are going to be using a publicly available data set. You can see that this data set contains failed bank list and it's starting from October the 1st, 2000. All right, so we went back to uh, our failed bank list and we took the URL and we are going to use the URL in our prompt. I came up with this prompt. Please access this data set available on the URL. I have given it the URL. This data set contains a failed bank list dating back to 2000. You are a data scientist. Perform data analysis on this list that contains failed banks. Create visuals, not limited to, including bar charts, line charts, graphs, tables that will summarize this data set for me. Also include quick summary after each of the visuals to explain what is happening and what you have done. We are going to send this and ChatGPT automatically knows that it should use Notable plugin because there is no other plugin that is enabled in this current chat. All right, so, and we got an error. And the reason why is that it seems that there is an issue with accessing Notable service at the moment. Please make sure you can log in to Notable and try to reinstall the Notable plugin for ChatGPT. Once that's done, I'll be able to help you with the data analysis. So I'm actually going to click on the link. We are redirected to our profile on the app notable.io. I'm just going to click next quick tour. So. I'm going to actually put the same prompt and uh, the Notable plugin comes back with, it seems that you don't have default project set in Notable. To proceed, please follow these steps. Visit Notable, use an existing project like my first project or create a new one by clicking create. After setting up a project, please paste the link to the project here. So here is even a quick gift that it gave it to me. So I know how to interact with the plugin. So we are going to do exactly this. So here in our profile, we are going to go and create a new project. We are going to name it. So let's name it ChatGPT uh, test. We are going to use our space and that is all right. We are going to create. So I'm going to go and click on my first notebook. And here we get totally clean new notebook that we can right now use. So we are going to paste the same prompt once again, but here this time as the plugin says, we are going to copy the URL of our project with this clean uh, Jupyter notebook. And we are going to write, please use this as my default project. You can see I got an error once again. And the reason why is that I did not use the project URL but I used the notebook instead. 
and it was clever enough to say to, to me that please make sure that the link you provided is a project link and not a notebook link. Project links in Notable have the following structure. So I'm going to copy and paste this once again. Uh, we hopefully right now get results. So I'm going to send this. All right, so it started to use the Notable and we can see what it does in the background. We can see that it's identifying the project ID and it's using the Notable once again. It's uh, right now using it for the third time and it looks like it's going to work this time. We can see that it's actually creating pandas using Matplotlib, Seaborn. So right now it's definitely going to work. And actually a good thing is that you can go directly here and you can go and see that automatically it creates a new notebook for you. It's called failed bank analysis. We are going to click on it and you can see the changes happening directly inside your notebook. All right. So we are finished. So I have successfully loaded the data from the provided URL. The data consists of the following columns, bank name, city, city, states, acquiring institution, closing date. Here's a preview of the first few rows of the data. It's uh, starting to create a, a, a table for me. Right, it's finished with the table preview. And right now, next, I will clean up the data by renaming the columns and converting the closing date column to a date time format. After that, I will start with the data analysis and visualization. Right now, it's using automatically the plugin once again. And I don't even write anything right now. This is all doing it behind the scenes for me. So we can go back to the notebook and we can see here that uh, this one has been added. This is a new thing here, cleaning up the data. It even provides the notes so we know what the plugin does. Right, so right now it looks like uh, I have cleaned up the data by renaming the columns and converting the closing date column to a date time format. Here's the updated data. So it successfully identified that it was not in the format of a date. And actually it also renamed that to be a closing date instead of uh, this one closing date closing. Here is the third step. It automatically continues and now it can actually start the data analysis. So it writes, I will begin by creating a bar chart to show the number of bank failures by state. So here I did not write anything once again. It automatically knows what it should visualize and this is where the magic actually happens. Here's a bar chart showing the number of bank failures by state. If we go uh, back to the notebook, we can see that it actually created the uh, bar chart for the numbers of bank that failed by the states. What has happened is that the answer is getting too long, so it just stopped generating. Create a line chart that shows the date on the X axis and number of bank failures on the Y axis. So let's see what happens here. All right, it looks like it's creating the code behind the scenes and then it actually did create it, the line chart and it seems correct because the highest number of bank failures was in the 2008 crisis. So um, yeah, that's correct. And the chart shows the number of bank failures by year. You can see how the numbers of failures has changed over the years. Next, I will create a bar chart to show the top 10 acquiring institutions by the number of banks they have acquired. So this, I didn't even ask this to do and it's continuing the analysis for me and boom, we have it uh, directly here in, in the chat. The chart shows the institutions that have acquired the most banks. This can give us an idea of which institutions have been most active in taking over failed banks. This concludes the data analysis. If you have any specific questions, if there is anything else you would like to explore in the data, please let me know. This is insane. And if we go back to our notebook, yes, we have it here. We have the line chart, which shows the number of bank failures over time. And then we also have the top 10 acquiring institution. I could continue with this, but this is where you actually can perform an analysis the same way as ChatGPT Code Interpreter does. But this plugin is available immediately for you, so you don't have to be on a waiting list and wait till it's going to be available to the public. So right now, instead of analyzing a publicly available data set, I'm going to show you how you can analyze your own data set. You want to go to the Notable uh, app once again, and here you click on upload. You are going to then upload your CSV file. So this can include your own data set. We right now have it uploaded. So I'm going to use the same prompt, the data set to be 
and we copy and paste the path here. Then we are going to go and say this data set contains the number of passengers on Titanic and their information. Uh, right now we are going to write you are a data scientist, perform data analysis on this list that contains passengers information create visuals not limited to including bar charts line charts graphs tables that will summarize this data set for me also include quick summary after each of the visuals to explain what is happening and what you have done please use this as my default project we can see if we go to our project uh, that we have a new notebook here it's called titanic passenger analysis all right, so we got this answer. I have created a cell to load the Titanic data set and display the first few rows. However, the cell hasn't been run yet. You can follow along with the analysis by clicking on the following link to the notebook. Once the kernel is ready, you can run the cell to load the data. After that, I will be able to help you with the data analysis. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, I clicked on the link and we can see that it's uh, trying to create a data frame uh, using Panda, read CSV, uh, and it's using the right CSV. So I'm gonna click on the run button and I think that should fix it. It actually loaded the data frame uh, correctly. So I think right now uh, we should be ready to go. Here I wrote down, it should be ready now. Please analyze the data set by creating multiple visuals, but not limited to bar charts, line charts, tables inside the notebook. Please also write summaries and any trends or important findings from the data analysis we are going to hit send and right now it should work all right so it's starting to use the notable once again and it successfully loaded the titanic data set the data consists of the following columns sex age ticket fare cabin and as the first step it's creating a preview of the first few rows of the data okay now let's start with the data analysis i will begin creating a bar chart to show the number of passengers who survived and who didn't survive all right and it created the bar chart so here's a bar chart showing the number of passengers who survived and who didn't survive it classified it correctly also with the zero is a no and one is yes we can go back to the notebook and it has automatically been added if if we scroll down we can see that it just continues doing the data analysis automatically the chart shows that more passengers did not survive represented by zero than those who did next let's create a bar chart to show the number of passengers in each passenger class here we can see that the chart shows that the majority of passengers were in the third class followed by the first class and then the second class. Next, let's create a bar chart uh, to show the number of male and female passengers. Here's a bar chart showing the number of male and female passengers. And it uh, gives us the uh, visual here. And if we go back, it actually is uh, automatically creating it in the notebook as well. And it just continues. Uh, the chart shows that there were more male passengers than female passengers on the Titanic. So it's also summarizing the chart for us um, and uh, giving us more insights. So next, let's create a histogram to show the distribution of passenger ages. It's This is insane, right? Because I am not writing any prompt right now. The only prompt I wrote down was that it should perform the data analysis and it's clever enough to detect all the important relationships, all the important variables that would be interesting to look at. But we can see that it tried to use Notable, but uh, it just stopped generating. So I think it's because the answer got way too long. Like we have, we have a table, we have like one, two, three visuals in one answer. So here I'm going to show you a quick tip. It's not only working for plugins, it's in general. If, if it stopped generating, you can just uh, write continue. And if we hit continue, we should be able to continue where it stopped. And it exactly continues where it stopped. So that's a quick tip for you. We have a histogram showing the distribution of passenger ages. The chart shows that the ages of passengers on the Titanic were approximately normally distributed with peak around the mid 20s to early 30s. So it even uh, give us a quick uh, analysis summary about what this uh, visual is telling us. Right now it's just continuing to generate more uh, visuals for us. So next let's create a bar chart to show the number of passengers who embarked at each port. So, and it's done. Here's the bar chart showing the number of passengers who embarked 
at each port. And here we can see that the most of the passengers embarked from Southampton. The chart shows that the majority of passengers embarked at Southampton, followed by Cherbourg and Queenstown. This concludes the data analysis. If you have any specific questions or if there is anything else you would like to explore in the data, please let me know. So I hope that you right now know how you can use Python uh, for the data analysis inside ChatGPT without uh, the need of code interpreter. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you learned anything new here, hit the like button down below, subscribe down below as well for more videos like this. I post every single week. Thank you so much and have a great day.